out here at the range, we're going to do a little PCC shooting. I'll tell you what, if you've never shot them, these little PCCs are a lot of fun. Now, the reason I'm showing you this isn't because of how much fun they are. It's because of the really cool engraving that's all over the bottom of this little PCC. So what we're going to do in this episode is I'm going to show you what I used to do that engraving. Stick around. Get ready for a major remodel, fellas. We're back in hardware mode. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Pews and Brews. I'm not so tactical Tim, of course, reaching for a beer so we can talk about some gun gear. Now, what I'm going to talk about today isn't really gun gear. It's a Saint Smart 3018 Pro or CNC machine. You're thinking, what does that have to do with guns? Well, if you saw in the intro, that little PCC I had that had the engraving on it, this is what I used to do that. I'll get you some close-up shots of that, but I am actually going to fire this up and we're going to do a design on an AR-15 lower. Now, because the AR-15s are aluminum, this CNC machine works out really well. It can't do steel or anything, so you can't do like a pistol slide or a revolver cylinder or anything like that. But for anything on aluminum, you know, on down, do acrylics, wood, anything like that, it's really a neat machine. The setup is easy, it works really well, and for me being kind of a gadget geek, it's just something that I thought, well, let me see if I can uh, maybe do some designs on some of my lowers, or if you do 80% lowers and you want to make them compliant by having the make, the model, the caliber, or serial number on it, you can do that with one of these as well. So stick around, I'll show you some of the software that I use. And then we'll go over just the general setup. I could spend an hour doing a video on just the machine. But if you decide you want to get one of these or you have one and you want to try it, you know, you'll have to read up on it and uh, experiment yourself. But I'll just go over some of the general settings and I'll show a time lapse of this design that we're going to put on this. Just as something kind of different and fun to do. So stick around and we'll get to doing some engraving. I'm just going to go over some real basic settings quick. The program that I use to get the code to send to the machine to actually engrave is from a company, if you look at the address bar here, called inevitables.com. They have this program called Easel. It's a really nice program. It has this real-time 3D rendering that you can look at. Now we're just going to do some lettering, so you know having the 3D isn't going to be such a big deal for this project. But it's a nice feature to have on a basically a free program. Now there is a pay version of it that includes more features. But I found I'm able to do, you know, some basic engraving with just the free program. So that's all we're going to look at right now. If you go up here, you're going to see your material is, is set at plywood. We're going to go down and change that to aluminum. And we're just going to do a small area. So we'll change the width and the length to 2 inches by 2 inches. And we'll make the height 1 inch. As you can see by doing that, it, it brings this window up a lot higher so you can see your, your work a little better. Now right next to the material it says bit. If you click on that, all these bits here are too big for the really tiny lettering that we're going to do. So you just click on other and you can add your own tip dimension. The little V bits that I'm using have a 0.1 millimeter tip. So we just switch that to millimeter, change it to 0.1, and that's set. They do have V bits available down here, but only with their Pro Pay version. So I found that just putting the tip diameter into this other window in the free version seems to work out just fine. Next, we're going to go up to Cut Settings. Now, this is fairly important. I switch it over to manual so that we can change these because instead of five inches a minute, I like running at three inches a minute. Because we're going through aluminum, 
what this feed rate means is if you were to just engrave a straight line across this, it would take a minute to go three inches. The default at five inches a minute is going faster because now you're covering five inches in a minute. And you really want to be careful about the speed because with these really tiny tips on these end mills, if you break one off halfway through a project, now you have to stop the machine, move the piece of work out from under it so you can change the bit, and then try to get it restarted within a thousandth of an inch of where you had to stop it. And that is really tough to do. So it's better just to take a little bit of time and run it slower than to run the risk of it not being able to clear the material out quick enough and overstressing the bit and snapping the tip off of it. The next one down here is your plunge rate. That's how quickly it goes down into the material when it starts to engrave an area. And then your depth per pass. I have that set at three thousandths of an inch. I found that these settings seem to work pretty well and don't give me issues with tips breaking. So that's just what I use. Now that we have all that set, we're going to actually go over here and do a little design. If you just click on the T, that's your text. There again, you can see these pros. That's for any of the stuff in the pay version, but there's a lot of other fonts in here. So we'll just pick one of those. And if you just click on the right, we can back out of that text logo. And we'll just do something simple like that. Now on this window over here, you're going to see shape. I like to put mine all the way at the bottom left corner with zero margin. So I'm going to change this X and Y, which is kind of your margins, how far away from the edges it starts, to zero. So that way we're starting all the way at the bottom left corner. The advantage to that is you can get your machine locked into this bottom left corner, and then all you have to worry about is having clearance length and width wise. You don't have to worry about doing a bunch of measurements to get everything dead center. The next one we're going to change is this size of our lettering. Obviously you can see it's too big. You want to lock these together because it'll, you can change one of these and it'll change the other one to maintain the correct proportions. So say we just want to do some eighth inch high lettering for like a serial number or something like that. We'll put in one, two, five, and you can see it changed the width proportionately so everything still looks correct. Now this next tab up here is cut. That's how deep it goes into the material. You can see it set here to almost half an inch, 0.4 inches. That's way, way too deep. So I'm going to go 0 0.02 inches, two hundredths of an inch. Because like I said, we're just doing a little bit of engraving and, and some lettering. We don't want to go too deep. And as you can see, it'll regenerate to show that that's much shallower now. Now, once you have that set, we can go down here and just use these little, these little slider bars. And we'll get this centered so that we can expand it. See our text a little better. And there's our text. And that's pretty much all you need to do. Now, if you go over here on the bottom right, you're going to see this simulate. By clicking on that, it and you can hit this play button, it simulates the path that the engraver is going to take as it engraves this. And you can see this is the engraver path that it's going to take, and it's showing that it'll take 34 minutes. Now, it may, half hour may seem like a long time to do just a little bit of lettering, but like I said, it's really best to run it slow so you limit the risk of snapping one of those tips off. But other than that, that's about it. Now we just go up here to Project. You go down to Download G-Code. And you can save it on a, as a file in your computer and then download it from your computer onto the little SD card with the USB adapter that comes with the unit. Plug that into the handheld controller and you're ready to go. That's all there is to getting a, a simple design into this. If it's something you want to do for yourself, you'll have to, you know, do some research, read up on it. Um, there's a ton of different things you can do with this. I could spend a long time 
just going over this program, but just for some simple engraving that we're going to do today, just a quick little look at the program we're going to use. This is probably the most important step when you set up your material is to make sure that it's absolutely true both front to back and left to right. If it's tilting in any axis, what happens is your bit as it's traveling across is either going to dig into the material because it's sloping into it and snap the tip off, which, like I said before, we definitely don't want to have happen. Or if it's sloping away, it's going to lose contact with the material and you just end up having no design in that particular area or it's a lot shallower in that area where it slopes away. So in order to do this, I just have, this is just a little inexpensive dial indicator, but each one of those lines is a thousandth of an inch. So if I just run it through the travel, I have a little bit of WD on there to make it slicker so it doesn't grab. You can see right there at the end, it does move about a thousandth of an inch, but now there again, this is a cheapy one, so it jumps a little bit when we reverse direction but as you can see even coming back it will change by about a thousandth of an inch that's probably imperfections in the surface of the material itself but that's close enough that I don't feel we're gonna have any issues with the bit breaking off if you need to I have some shims here you know you just shim up one side or another now I'll check a couple other spots on there but next we're gonna go over some of the controls to get ready to engrave, and then we'll put a design down. Once you get that all set up, then you can take your controller, this is the handheld controller, and set up where you want to start your engraving at. This is the small USB plug that you plug into your computer, and then the SD card goes in the end there. Once you download your design, you just pop that SD card right in the top there. To set the machine up, you'll see you have your different axes here for left and right, up and down, or back and forth and up and down. On the front here, you're going to see File and Control. The first thing you want to select is Control. And then you're going to enter the spindle or laser. Obviously, we have a spindle, not a laser. The probe, I don't use because the probe is, is actually a piece you sit on top of the material and bring this down. And when it touches the probe, it sets your material. But in order to do it that way, you have to have the thickness of your material exactly right. It's just maybe for something way more advanced it would be useful but for this there's a much easier way to do it that I'm going to show you. Next is 0xy or 0xyz. This is where we want to be because what we're going to do in order to zero this we want to move it left or right to our start point. Now if you see on here it says the control up here says times one that's what this little step does one ten a hundred and then zero point one that's the amount that this will move every time you hit a button Oops. so if I set this to ten you'll notice when I hit to go right it moves a lot if you set it to a hundred it moves ten times as far which that setting I almost never use I pretty much stick with the one setting especially for small things like this it gets you pretty close to where you need to be so once you have it set remember we had our design to start at the bottom left hand side so you want to set this to where you want your design to start. Now to set your up and down or your Z axis, the way we do that is you just take a thin piece of paper, put it under the tip, 
you want to make sure that your step is set to the 0 0.1. That's the most minute amount of travel every time you push the button. And what we're going to do is put this piece of paper under there. Now I'll take a few because it was up pretty high. But you just want to keep moving it down until it just grabs this piece of paper. You can see right there, you can hear that paper grabbed. That's what you want. You want it to just grab that piece of paper and leave it that far off of the workpiece to start. Once you have that set, you just press and hold enter. Once it goes back to the main screen, now it's locked in to that's your start position. Now we're going to go and hit enter to select our file. The first three on here are actually text on how to use the machine, basically instruction manuals that are loaded onto the, S the micro SD. Those you don't want to make sure not to delete. You don't want to delete any of those first three. And then our designs are these ones followed by .nc. Those are your different designs. And you can name them whatever, and that name will come up on here. As you see, that's that We the People that we just designed. When you're ready to engrave, you hit Enter. And you'll see this screen pop up. If you notice down at the bottom here, it says press Enter to pause or continue. So as soon as we hit Enter, this is going to start. This is the design we're doing, the We the People. The state that it's in is stopped, and the percentage complete is zero, obviously, because we haven't started engraving yet. But once I hit this, it'll fire up. We'll start engraving. Now, I'm going to do a little bit different design than this We the People one, and I'm going to speed it up a lot because it's going to take a long time to complete. But that's the basic controls on how to set it up and get it ready. So now I'm going to go back and make sure this is do a couple of little measurements so that my design is centered here, make sure I'm starting at the appropriate place to have it pretty much centered, and then we'll get to doing some engraving. All right, I did a couple last minute measurements just to make sure everything is right where I want it. The other thing we're gonna do because we're gonna be engraving metal is I'm going to put down just a little bit of WD-40 over this because having some lubrication is always a good thing when you're having metal against metal. So not a ton, just enough to give it some lubrication as it's going through. And we have everything set. Now this will get a little loud when the spindle turns on. I'll let it run in real time for a little bit just so you can sort of see it start. But then I'm going to speed it up a lot because this is going to take quite a while to complete. And here we go. Now you'll see right off the bat, it doesn't even appear to be doing much of anything. That's because we have the passes set so minute so that we don't break that tip. But now you can see it's starting to, to get into it. You can hear it vibrating a little bit. And there we go. We're engraving.
And here's our final design. Now, if you remember, I said we we're going to do something a little bit different than the We the People script that I used to show the CNC program. So I did a Viking skull with a couple of crossed axes. And I'll tell you what, if you look at the detail in that, I mean, you can see every whisker in the beard, the striations in the horns, designs on the axes. And this isn't big. I mean, I can cover it with my thumb. So to get that kind of detail from this little CNC machine, I think is outstanding. Now, this design did take about four hours to complete. If you'll see in the time lapse, there's a couple times you'll see something come in. That's, I had some compressed air to blow the chips away and add a little more WD to it, mainly because I knew how intricate this design was going to be. If you're just doing some lettering or some script with it, you can add some WD, hit start, and pretty much let it run its course. But with this design, I paid a little more attention to some of that. And, boy, that's, I think that just came out excellent. So, we're going to show you some of the engraving that I did on the PCC from the beginning of the video. And then we'll go wrap this up. Here's the PCC from the beginning of the video. 45 ACP, as you can tell. I tried doing some color fill with the Norell's Molly resin. This was the burnt bronze. And it just kind of washed out some of the detail. I don't have my technique down real good just yet. I think I probably had it a little too thick. I need to thin it out so it flows better into some of the areas. And let's get a shot of the other side of it here. There's the other side with some lettering. Now there again, my color fill really doesn't do this any justice. But that just goes to show you that this old engraver will do a really good job on pretty much everything. Well, as you see, we're out here at the tavern, and that can only mean one thing. Time to grab a brew and wrap up this review. It's almost time to grab another one. So, as you saw from the finished product, man, the results I couldn't be happier with. If you're looking at getting something to do this kind of thing, now this is the only one I've tried is this 3018 Prover, but as you saw from our finished product, it'll it's more than up to the task. It'll do any kind of engraving that you want, anywhere from the basic lettering on up to obviously a really complicated design. So it, there's gonna be a learning curve if you decide you wanna go with something like this. I didn't want this video being super long, so I didn't show absolutely everything that's involved with setting it up but all I did was go out to the hardware store when I first got it got a piece of two inch by like three foot aluminum and just cut it into sections and use that to practice with and I'll tell you what it's it's a lot of fun getting to learn how to use it and then once you get everything down just sitting there watching the design come out man it's 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 really kind of neat now I'm sort of a gadget geek so I understand that it's not for everybody, but for me up here in the Northeast where we get cold crappy winters and I need something to do, eh, I figured I'd give it a shot and the results speak for themselves. So if this is something you're looking to do and you're looking for a machine to do this, like you see, this 3018 Prover is more than up to the job. So that'll about wrap it up here from all of us at the Nazi Tactical Tavern. Now get out there and do something useful with yourself and get pewing. We'll see you next time. Oh, that's a sad state of affairs.